Would you rather grow hair on your teeth or teeth on your hair? My sister asked. Not letting our two younger siblings snickering affect her serious expression as she tapped me on the shoulder with the asking stick. Before I make my choice, there are a few questions I must ask, I replied with a pretentious eyebrow lift as I swept the asking stick away. If I choose the first, would I be able to shave the hair off my teeth? And if yes, would it grow back? Our siblings began making retching noises, but my sister maintained her poise as she replied, The answer is yes and yes. And if I choose the second, would I be able to shave the hair off my head? And if yes, would the new hair grow back in with teeth? Once again, the answer is yes and yes, my sister replied, as our siblings squealed in disgust and scratched their scalps. And what would I use to brush? I asked. A hairbrush or a toothbrush? Our siblings found this question hilarious as they laughed and clapped. They always enjoyed it when we took things too seriously and dramatized our thought process. And they seemed to be particularly entertained as my sister and I introduced them to this game. My sister remained unflappable as she replied, If you choose teeth on your hair, you would use a wide tooth comb. If you choose hair on your teeth, then a toothbrush if you decide to shave, or a toothbrush with an eyebrow comb if you choose not to shave. Hmm... I pondered for a few seconds, stroking my chin with theatrical flourish. Then, my dear big sister, I would rather grow hair on my teeth, because I could just shave it each morning and be normal for the rest of the day. Our siblings shuddered and giggled as they stuck their tongues out, spitting imaginary hair out of their mouths. <laughs> You're weak, my sister scoffed with a superior head tilt. I would rather grow teeth on my hair and... She flipped her long curls off her shoulders. I'd wear them proudly. What on earth are you two talking about? That was our mother, standing outside my bedroom door with a look of utter revulsion on her face. We're playing would you rather, my sister replied. Teeth on hair and hair on teeth? My mother asked, staring at us. That's not how I remember playing it. Where does your generation come up with horrifying things like that? Our younger siblings tumbled over in laughter. It was always amusing seeing parents exasperated, disgusted, or out of their element. Actually, that question was pretty tame, my sister said with a shrug. And is that Nana's cane? Our mother asked, crossing her arms in disapproval. You know better than to remove it from its case. No, it's the asking stick, my sister replied, balancing it across her shoulders. And it's not like anyone's using it. It just sits there collecting dust. I'm doing it a favor today. I'm giving it purpose. Its purpose is being the only keepsake your father has of his mother's. He'll kill you if he finds out you're playing around with it. Our father peeked into the room, standing behind our mother and wrapping his arms around her waist. Who am I going to kill? He asked, nuzzling his face against hers. Because it'll have to be quick. We're going to be late for the movie. My sister waved her hand, shooing them away. Then go! Don't worry, we've got it handled. Curb your creativity, our mother said. I don't want you two giving Jude and Laura nightmares. And tomorrow is the first day of school, so bedtime is- This isn't the first time we've babysat, Mom, my sister said, rolling her eyes. Just go enjoy date night. Come on, honey. Mona and Nadia know what they're doing, our father said, pulling our mother away. Just put the cane back in its case, he called over his shoulder. My mother didn't like us playing with her things when she was alive. Let's not disrespect her now that she's passed, do you hear? Yes, yes Dad. Dad. After we heard the front door close and lock, 
Jude turned to Mona and me. I want to ask a would you rather. Mona shrugged and handed him the asking stick. Go ahead, ask Laura. He grinned and turned to his little sister, poking her in the stomach with the asking stick. Would you rather turn into a cockroach or a rat? Laura grimaced and shoved the asking stick away. None of them. You have to pick one, Jude said, pouting. That's the game. No, I don't. Laura turned to Mona and me. Do I? Yes, you do, Mona replied in an authoritative tone. Those are the rules. If you don't choose one, then you forfeit your right to play. Laura's lip trembled, and I nudged Mona and whispered, Mona, chill. Fine, Mona sighed. Laura, how's this? You can ask Jude to answer first. Jude didn't even wait. I would rather turn into a cockroach. That's because they can survive anything. I learned that in school. They're like super bugs. Laura looked at him, quizzical. Super bugs. He nodded, excited to share his trivia. They can eat anything, so they'll never starve. They can hold their breath for over 30 minutes, so they'll never drown. They're super fast, so they'll never be caught. They can survive nukes, so they'll never die. They can even live if they lose their heads. And I'm going to choose to be the one with wings so I can fly. Laura stared at him in awe. I want to be a super bug. I choose to rather be a cockroach with wings, too. Hey, you can't copy me, Jude said, frowning as he turned to Mona and me. Can she? Yes, she can, Mona replied. It's called Would You Rather, not First Come, First Serve. Jude wrinkled his nose in confusion. Huh? My turn, Laura said, clapping her hands. Nadia, would you rather eat, um, your glasses or, um... She looked around my bedroom. Or your curtains. Jude scoffed. That's a stupid question. No, it's not, Laura said, crossing her arms. You're stupid. If I may, I said, drawing her attention. Will I just have to eat it one time, or would it be the only thing I eat forever and ever and ever? She giggled. Only one time. Then I would rather eat my glasses, because they're smaller and I'd be done with them faster. Me too, she said, beaming. You don't even wear glasses, Jude said. Your question isn't fair. I have sunglasses, and I'm going to eat them. But make-believe eat them, I said, now worried she may be too young for this game. She rolled her eyes. I know, silly. Yeah, she knows, silly, Mona teased, and I stuck out my tongue at her. Mona, ask me one. Jude said with an eager smile as he shoved the asking stick in her hands. Make it really weird, too. Like the first one. Fine. Hmm. She waved the asking stick in his direction. Would you rather fall... Mona's cell phone rang, interrupting her, and she held up a finger as she answered. She then snorted an obnoxious laugh and threw the asking stick on my lap before she hopped off my bed, and Jude frowned in disappointment as he watched her leave the room. I can ask you one, I offered. No, this is a stupid game, he muttered as he slid off my bed. He was at that age where he took everything personally, so I just sighed and let him go. Laura asked me if I wanted to watch videos with her, so I tossed the asking stick on my desk and spent the evening lounging on my bed with her as we laughed at animals being ridiculous. When 8 o'clock rolled around, Mona and I made sure Jude and Laura had washed up, brushed, and changed into their pajamas before we tucked them in and read them a bedtime story. 
I then went to my room and browsed for a while, trying to ignore the endless chattering coming from Mona's room before I turned in for the night. The next morning, I woke up before my alarm, coughing and sputtering. <laughs> Groggy, I sat up in bed, my tongue flapping as I tried to spit out whatever was tangled in my mouth. Parts of it hung from my lips and stuck to my chin, and I reached up in bewilderment. It felt like... hair. I grabbed my glasses and ran to the mirror, and my jaw fell open in disbelief at the sopping locks of hair sprouting from my teeth. I pulled my cheeks to the side and tilted my head in all directions. Every single tooth from my incisors to my molars, was covered in silky auburn strands. I hooked my fingers around the locks to guide them out of my mouth, and they hung down like a glistening, disconcerting beard. Oh my god! I jumped at Mona's exclamation. I hated it when she entered my room without permission, but I was too distracted by her hair to yell at her. Each and every strand of her curls was now weighed down with pearly grains that coated them from top to bottom. Awestruck, I reached for her hair and ran my hands through it, the minuscule teeth tinkling as they rubbed against one another. In return, she shoved her fingers in my mouth and pulled at my cheeks, staring, mesmerized. Wow, did they grow this long overnight? She twirled one of the dripping locks around her finger and tugged, making me wince. Ooh, does that hurt? She asked. I oh, know. Yeah. Does this hurt? I asked sarcastically, pulling her hair. She yelped and jerked back, and I was left with a few strands in my clenched fist. I brought them closer to my eyes, inspecting them, and was surprised to see incisors, canines, premolars, and molars represented albeit not in any particular pattern. I ran the edge of my thumbnail over their tiny forms, trying to pop one off, but they were stuck tight to the hair strand. Beautiful, aren't they? Mona asked, grinning. Aren't you wondering how this happened? I asked, spraying her with spittle as tooth hair flopped between my lips. This obviously has something to do with the game yesterday. Obviously. She cocked an eager eyebrow. Does this mean you're going to eat your glasses? I looked at myself in the mirror. My glasses remained as unappetizing as they were yesterday. No. Maybe it only worked from the first question we answered? I don't think so. It's not the first time you and me have played. We have to figure out exactly what we did because I want endless wishes. Imagine all the stuff we could ask for. We could be rich. We could have superpowers. We could fly or- Mona, what about Jude and Laura? I interrupted, my blood running cold. Her expression shifted to worry. I don't know. Mom should be waking them up for school right about now. We ran out of my room, then froze at the sight of our mother leaning against her bedroom's doorframe. Damn flying cockroaches, she muttered in disgust as she put her slipper back on. A huge thank you to all my poltergeists. Stephen Swiftbird, Shadow Blackhawk, Spirit Father, King Gallant, JTX31, Joker Smurf 3, Daniel O'Connell, Gary, Forever, Nathan Konark, John, and Benjamin Croon. And on top of that, a huge thank you to one of my apparitions this month, Royally Flawed, one of my very good and supportive friends. Your donations are much appreciated. So, thank you, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>